The Clockwork 3, 2010, a historical science fiction novel for young adults by Matthew J. Kirby, explores an alternate version of the late 19th century. It is an example of steampunk, a subgenre of science fiction that presents a version of the Victorian era in which steam-powered and clockwork technology dominate. Kirby drew inspiration from the book from a historical newspaper article about a young indentured servant, who played violin in the streets to earn money until he eventually was able to escape. The Clockwork 3 has three protagonists, all of whom are young people in dire economic circumstances who improve their circumstances through a combination of supernatural intervention and teamwork. Giuseppe is an orphan who plays music in the street to make money but is forced to give it all away to his master, leaving him with no means of escape. Hannah works as a maid in a hotel until she hears rumors of a guest with a hidden treasure. Frederick is an apprentice clockmaker who spends his free time building a clockwork automaton. One day, Giuseppe finds an enchanted violin floating in the harbor that makes beautiful music every time it is played. When he plays his new violin in the street, people shower him with more money than he has ever made before. He begins to form a plan to buy passage back to his siblings in Italy where he is originally from. On the way to work one day, he runs into Frederick who is searching for a piece of metal to serve as the chest plate for his automaton. After they part ways, Giuseppe finds a coal chute cover in a coal yard and picks it up for Frederick, thinking that he can use it to make the chest plate. Meanwhile, Hannah is at work in the hotel where she serves as a maid to support her family. Her father has had to leave work because of an illness, and Hannah is looking for a way to make money to pay for his medicine. She hears about a hotel guest named Mr. Stroop who supposedly has a hidden fortune. Thinking that she can use the money to help her father, Hannah searches Mr. Stroop's room, finding a map that hints the treasure may be hidden in a nearby park. While searching the park, she encounters Giuseppe who helps her look for the treasure. Though they do not find the money, Giuseppe uses his earnings from playing his violin to purchase an herbal medicine that Hannah can give to her father. The next day, all three children meet for the first time. Frederick shows the other two his automaton, which is now only missing its head. The three agree to help one another solve their problems, beginning with Frederick's automaton. Giuseppe mentions having seen an automaton head in a museum, and the children hatch a plan to inspect it so Frederick can see how it works. That evening, they sneak into the museum and Frederick begins to examine the head. However, the guards catch them in the act, forcing them to flee with the stolen head. Hannah takes a small piece of clay from the museum. They manage to escape, and Frederick discovers that the head was made by Albertus Magus, a real historical figure who lived in the 13th century. Frederick attaches the head to his automaton, and Hannah inserts the piece of clay, which it turns out belonged to a golem, into the machine, bringing it to life and imbuing it with human intelligence. Hannah discovers that Mr. Stroop's treasure is actually money that has been set aside in his will to preserve the one public park in the city. Though she has an opportunity to take the money for herself, Hannah declines because it would lead to the destruction of the park. Her employer at the hotel, Mr. Twine, impressed by her cleverness and honesty, promotes her to the head of maids. The new position comes with a pay increase and a stipend for new clothes. Hannah gives part of her stipend to Giuseppe so that he finally has enough to pay for a ticket home. Giuseppe's master tries to kill him to keep him from leaving, but Giuseppe is saved by Frederick's automaton. One of Hannah's clients at the hotel takes Giuseppe under her wing and lets him travel with her playing his violin in the courts of Europe. Frederick completes his automaton and is promoted to journeyman. He and Hannah remain close, and he helps her pay for the treatment that eventually cures her father of his affliction. The novel ends with him showing Hannah a clockwork bird that he has made. As the bird begins to sing, Hannah's father begins to tap his foot, indicating that he has recovered from his illness. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.